Welcome back. Well, Orange County Fire Authority is on today. We also have a, a special guest, uh, Officer P. Kim with the CHP. Good to have you on today. Good morning, Ken. And uh, we're going to get to talk about uh, something that I know Steve has been passionate for about, uh, I don't know, 12, 14 years at least. The mock DUI you well, do for the high school. 24 years. 24 we did years. our first one in May of 1991 with CHP. That's amazing, and we're going to get we're going to get to that, and that's we got a lot of photos to show you on that and talk about it. Uh, first, though, we're going to talk about uh, you know a subject you've talked about quite often, and it's about uh, drowning statistics, and we have it on the screen. It's a little hard to see. I had to kind of piece it together to get it all on there. But let's talk about all the, the incidents that have gone on uh, so far. Already 28, mm -hmm. and this is Orange County, am I right? In all of Orange County, And correct. unfortunately, half of those have been uh, fatal. Right, and that's what we find. So half of the drowning calls we go on end up being fatal, and uh, close to 25% of those end up having the patients of having some sort of irreversible brain damage. That's mm -hmm. what the numbers show us. And it's, you know, it's staggering. So, so far this year, we've already had 14 fatals, um, but six of those fatals have been adults yeah. over 50 years old. Mm -hmm. And the common theme there is they're, they're in or around the water alone. There's nobody with them. So if they have a medical emergency or something happens, they trip and fall or they jump in and hit their head, there's nobody there to keep their head above water. Yeah. And unfortunately, they die. And so we're just asking everybody, swim with a buddy, never swim alone. Um, always have somebody with you. So it's, it's affecting the young in, in, in just over a 30 day span in, in May and June, we had um, seven children that were involved in drowning incidents. Three of those were fatal and it, it's very tragic. And some of those other uh, others are still in the hospital and you know, aren't doing as well. Um, it's just, and, and, and out of those seven in a, just over a month span, Six were in a backyard pool. Their parents were home on each of them, and they just made their way back to the pool. And, and I give the analogy is, because people say, oh, should the parents be held accountable and so forth? These were responsible parents at home. The little guys just, they want to be adventurous. They, they mm -hmm. want to get out just like teenagers. Yeah. Very difficult. You're in bed, they're asleep. And unfortunately, once in a while, a teenager will sneak out and get involved in a terrible traffic accident. Right, we know that's happened. Yeah. Right, yeah. so it's, we, we stress, Orange County Fire stresses the, stress the ABCs of water safety. One of those being barriers. We, we need an isolation fence around the pools and spas. That way, if a child, a small child, gets out the, the sliding glass door, the screen door, a side door, there's another barrier so he or she cannot get into the water, which six of these kids did, and out of those six, three died. It, you know what, what's really um, troubling on this is that when you hear about kids drowning in Orange County, your first thought was, okay, they're at the beach. The, uh, the undertow came in, they got pulled out, which is tragic in itself, but mm -hmm. it's something you can kind of say, well, you know, uh, it, it's more expected, let's put it that way. When you hear that they're in a home pool, right. that's what's, it, it's just got to be well, it's heart wrenching. Uh, yeah, I mean, we, I mean, we said it's at the same time. Yeah. It's just these families, they're good families. They, they mean to do well. They're, they watch their kids and they, they all occurred, you know, around the same time. It's, it's early evening, somewhere between five o'clock and 6.45 or so, and, and then that range end of the day, parents are busy getting ready for dinner, cleaning up. The kids probably have spent some time in the pool already during mm -hmm. the day and they're just attracted to the water. They, that's playtime to them. They don't see any danger because they're used to mom or yeah. dad holding them or a brother and sister holding them or they're used to playing in the bathtub where they could sit down and I mean Pete you have a couple kids you know you have to be right there with them but, but they're used to playing in the water and playing in the bathtub. Absolutely, I see it all the time. We take the kids to the pool and, and uh, they, they gravitate toward the water. They really do. Yeah, and we, we have a little backyard spa, an in-ground spa, and when my daughter was, I don't know, probably a year old is when we installed a fence around it. And uh, I, have to, you know, I, have to, I have to tell you that the person that kept pushing me on that was a good friend of ours, uh, Larry Brody, because Larry Brody, right. he would come over and go, you got to put that in. <laughs> uh -huh. And we did. And of course, she's eight and a half now. She could e easily climb over that fence. But even now, when she's out there, uh, 
you know, if, we, if we're not out there, even if I have to run upstairs for a minute, it's like, no, you got to get out. You know, you got to sit on the side or sit back, and she knows to do so. Uh, but it gets, to, it gets to that point where even at eight and a half, the, you know, the water's only two feet deep, but still, she could hit her right. head. Right, well, last year, remember in Mission Viejo, there was a four-year-old and a six-year-old swimming in a backyard pool. The dad was inside doing something, and then something happened to the six-year-old. The four-year-old thought she was just playing, mm -hmm. and unfortunately, by the time dad realized it, it was too late, and that six-year-old died. Yeah. Tragic. It just... Our heart breaks for all these families. Yeah, it really is. Um, we're going to move on to uh, your air ops. Right. Well, right now. And uh, we know the CHP has air ops. <laughs> right, too. exactly. And, you know. So, um, <laughs> Friday night, um, our helicopter flew up to um, the, the Redding area. There's about 40 miles from Redding. There mm -hmm. was uh, lightning complex, a bunch of lightning strikes out there. So, there was a series of fires. So, they're on the saddle fire up about 40 miles away from Reading, and they've been there since Friday evening, and they're still actively participating. And our helicopter is able to fly at night. And so it's a 24-hour helicopter, and our pilots are, are the best in the country. Yeah, we strongly we know believe that. that. In we, fact, you know, yeah. the last couple of years we've hired some, we did a national search, and we got the best pilots, we believe. And so, you know, I was just sent a message um, from one of the crew chiefs, Shane Sherwood, up there, and they had a rescue um, the other day at 6,000 elevation. There was somebody that was having a medical emergency, and they were able to fly the helicopter within, he was saying, um, trees were about 200 feet tall. Um, I mean, that's, that's yeah, pretty tall, that's and then there was about a 50-50 clearing that was used, and they were working with uh, the trucky hot shots in there, and that helicopter was able to land safely and treat the patient because we have a flight medic on board. There's a flight medic with them, and uh, on the weekends, we have a flight medic here in Orange County every mm -hmm. weekend because we get so many remote rescues, but that flight medic was able to treat the patient, fly him out. They landed at Helibase, and then a waiting paramedic unit and a ground ambulance took the patient. It's I mean, amazing to me that your helicopters have that range. Do they have to stop a few times right, on the so, way up? So they, they had to stop and get fuel. Uh, but, you know, they could fly for about an hour and a half or two hours. Okay. And, um, you know, and then they, they refuel. Mm -hmm. But um, so it's, yeah, they were up in... Um, That's amazing. Yeah, it, it's, it's, I didn't it's know very they, impressive. They would, the helicopters themselves. I know you guys, if you're needed somewhere, mm -hmm. uh, would go as, as far as you're, you're needed, sometimes out of state, right. to help out, but I didn't know the uh, helicopters. Well, fortunately, there. Orange County Fire has four helicopters. Yeah. Two of the, you know, the Bell 412s, dual engines, so they're able to get yeah. up there they're fairly nice. quick. We have the privilege of going right. up, and uh, it's a great operation. Uh, next thing we're gonna talk about here is a house fire. And was this the one in, um, uh, yeah, Foothill Ranch, and uh, which is technically uh, Lake Forest? Right. And how did this, uh, how did this start? This well, fire? it was about 5:30 in the morning, and uh, on June 8th, it was Monday morning. The family was inside sleeping, all upstairs. Mm -hmm. The fire was an electrical malfunction. The investigators believe of one of those strip plugs. Wow. And you know that, that's why we want to make sure they all have a circuit breaker on there. So if there's a problem. They, they actually shut off, mm -hmm. but uh, it failed. Uh, there was a fire downstairs. Well, what saved their lives were smoke alarms mm -hmm. because mom and dad woke up to the smoke alarms, ran down, and um, they realized there was a fire. Dad grabbed an extinguisher. The thing is with extinguishers, if there's already a fire that's established, they're not gonna do much right. at all. You need to get out. So mom ran up and grabbed a 15-year-old and a 12-year-old boy and a girl. And as they came down, the three of them did experience some smoke inhalation and some minor first and degree mm -hmm. burns, the face and, and so forth. Um, just because it, it is so hot, a fire is hot, it's smoky, but the, honestly, these saved their lives. They would have been trapped upstairs. They would have had to have gone out um, a window or they could have easily been overcome with the, mm -hmm. the smoke and the hot gases. Uh, and you know, this is well into the incident, but it did major, you could see this, Wow. did major damage inside. And then this is, this is the house next door. Basically, this house next door had about $30,000 worth of damage. So there was almost close to a million dollars worth of damage with the you know, interior of the house, 
uh, so the contents, the structure, and then some damage to the house next door as well. Wow. But just that quick. Fortunately, they're all going to be okay. They all three were transported to the burn center at Western Medical But again, Medical it's, the, it's those, those power strips. And, uh, you know, I've looked at mine, and I think there's a, a couple I still need to replace. Some of them that we had were really, were really old, but they have the circuit breaker. I was right. surprised. So make sure it's good quality. Yeah. And it has a circuit breaker, and it's plugged directly into the wall, and they're not daisy chained. You, you don't have one circuit breaker, mm -hmm. one multi plug adapter into another, then into a wall. It has to now, be directly. Now, does it into the matter wall. what's plugged into them? What if you have very, uh, you know, devices in there? Maybe your, your your power plug for your phone or something that's not pulling a lot of power. Right. That's rather than you know, a toaster. You never want that, yeah. but you understand what I'm saying. Appliances, we like to be plugged directly into an outlet. Right. That way, if something happens, the circuit breaker in the house for the house yeah. will trip. Now, it, it should trip on, on these circuit breakers, too, and these multi-plug adapters, but sometimes they malfunction. Mm -hmm. And but you make sure you buy a good quality. Do not buy the cheap ones. Buy a good quality one. All right. Very good. Now we're going to go on to uh, really the reason you're here today uh, for years. Uh, as you said, you've been doing these mock DUIs at uh, the local high schools. And uh, we're going to show some pictures here. Now keep in mind, who's ever, when you're looking at these pictures, this is a mock DUI, but it's done very real. Uh, your, uh, the Orange County Fire Authority <coughs> is involved, whatever ambulance service is involved, CHP is involved, mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of the, the kids you see here are often gotten from the drama department of, right. of the schools, <laughs> but it is done very real. So tell me how this is set up the, in kind of the history behind it. Well, the history was basically working with CHP and Orange County Fire. So we did our first mock DUI in May of 1991, 24 years ago. And so wow. I had put together some slide presentations. That was, that was my senior project in high school. And then after that, and I got the pictures from Ken Daly, used to be the PIO in, in mm -hmm. South Orange County. He gave me a bunch of photos um, from different traffic accidents, and I got some from our, our fire authority too. And I started doing, after my senior project in high school, I graduated in 88, I, I did some high schools and some junior highs, putting on these these slideshows of real incidents. Now, were you with the fire authority at the time? Yeah, so I, unfortunately, <laughs> okay. I got hired very young okay. with Orange County Fire Authority. And um, so that, that really helped me out. But in the fall of 1990, I did a high school, and we did it to a number of the students. And we did the slideshow. Well, the principal at Santa Margarita said, why don't you come and do something in the spring? We've had the last couple of years this crash car put out there. Mm -hmm. And we have a you know saying up there, and Mad usually brings the crash car, mm -hmm. but we want to do something different. So Ken Daly, uh, we start brainstorming with some different people, some some people in the Orange County Fire Authority, some people in, in CHP, and Ken found this tape that he had just received from back east, and it was just a play that the students put on in a parking lot. I think it was in New Jersey. Just it was real cheesy and everything. So a bunch of us got together and said, we could recreate this. So with the help of Mission Hospital and Gloria Lee, we put together a script. And then for 24 years, we've been working with the CHP, Orange County Sheriff's Department, Orange County Fire Authority, Mission Hospital, the local ambulance companies, the local towing companies, SNK participated, SNK Towing and all of them. Our tip volunteers, they wear the, the yellow vests. Mm -hmm. I mean, you see, see Pete right here. I mean, this is realistic that the students, you know, get upset. Um, the well, and to tell you how realistic is, it is, I, we couldn't put all the photos here, but uh, Pete, one of the photos, you're giving a DUI test to one of the, to one of the kids, right? Yes. So it, you treat this very real. Absolutely, absolutely. We, uh, from the interview process, to, you know, what you've had to drink, how much you've had to drink, um, you know, all the way down to the field sobriety tests. We, we do the tests exactly like we would do out in the field. Um, we explain them to the, uh, to the students and, and uh, we go through them just like in real life. And uh, this is set up, uh, the cars are brought in, everything's set up with sheets over them, uh, kind of you're staging it while, right. the, while the kids who are not participating are in their classes or whatever and then they're brought out. And from what I understand, you guys arrive and uh, you got the sirens going and everything just as if it's, it's real, right? Right, we roll in. Mm -hmm. This was a rainy day. This yeah, was May that, yeah. 15th at Tesoro High School right here. And the, the 
school did not want to cancel. They want to do it. We put some easy apps and the students were great. They were quiet, they, they listened. There's the Grim Reaper. Right. And um, we have, this is uh, you know one of our paramedics playing the radio paramedic talking to Mission Hospital. Mm -hmm. We have Orange County Fire Dispatchers there. We have Mission Hospital nurses there that are doing the moulage. Um, you know, CHP, the Sheriff's Department, the ambulance, you know, doctor's ambulance or care ambulance. And so it's, it's all these agencies coming together, like this is a real incident, and it's a reenactment of an actual accident that occurred going to a winter formal or a prom. So you wow. can see them, they're in prom attire, and a mom shows up, which is often they do, mom and dads now, mm -hmm. because you know, with texting, yeah. your, your parents, within minutes a lot of times, they know about an yeah. accident. And so with you know, all these different agencies, and then Friends Against Drinking and Driving, um, we all come together to put on these reenactments of a real accident. When the, these students, you could see them, they're 20, 30 feet away from this horrific accident. It, it looks realistic. It and, does, Anita yeah. Stockruger and all the nurses at Mission do an awesome job with this moulage. And you look at, you look at the, this photo here um, with, you know, just the reactions there look mm -hmm. absolutely like it, it just really happened. Have you noticed, when, when you've done these, both of you, the students that are watching, they know this is a reenactment, but do they get emotional? Absolutely. Yeah, the, as a matter of fact, uh, I'm watching um, everybody and because uh, I have a little bit of downtime when the firefighters are actually uh, cutting the victims out of the car when they're doing their, their uh, uh, you know, attending to the victims. Um, I have a little bit of downtime and I'm watching the audience and I can see the, the kids in the, in the very front row, they're crying. I mean, you've wow. got like four or five girls in a row. They're all crying. The, the boys are tearing up and, you know, it's a, a pin could drop there and you can hear it in the audience because they're all quiet and, and it, I, I can tell it affects them. Where, the, where do you get these vehicles? Are they actual crash well, vehicles? S&K Towing <laughs> donated okay. all f for all the five mock DUI okay. crashes. We've done 93 now since wow. 1991. So we, we do about five or six a year. We did five this year. One of the schools was, was unable to do it this year. Uh, and then we, we do them throughout Orange County, but mm -hmm. I mean, we work with the ones in South Orange County. There's about 14 high schools in, in basically south of Irvine mm -hmm. uh, that we work with, in, including some of the private high schools. And um, so s &K, so we use the same car for all five, the rollover, but the other one, you could see the truck company. Right. These are highly trained truck firefighters and, and they're ripping the doors off with specialized tool, the jaws alive, and they'll take the whole roof off. I mean, it's, it's amazing what these guys do. Plus it's outstanding training for all of us, all the What's agencies together. What's the setup time for this? And how long is the entire event? This must take quite a long time. Well, it, it takes quite a bit it, to plan, <laughs> yeah. to plan these. And then we're, we're out there early in the morning setting this up, but we go from nothing on the street and we try to do them in the street. Mm -hmm. So at, uh, if we do El Toro High School, it's on Toledo. If it's Santa Margarita, it's on a Lost to Pause. We did Tribuco Hills High School on Mustang Run. I mean, this is oh, in yeah. a neighborhood. So you closed down. So we have to get permission from the yeah. city council wow. and so forth. So it's, it's, there's a lot that goes into these, but they're effective. The school says by far this is the best presentation in, that these students will see in their four years of high school. Yeah. Because, you know, I go back to when I was in high school and, you know, you just back then they actually had driver's ed. <laughs> you right. guys remember that. Uh -huh. But, you know, you'd see the films and that would be about it. And, it, right. you know, you'd be there. Yeah, OK, fine. But this uh, I can see really uh, hits home. It looks so realistic. And uh, the dedication that everyone who does this puts into it. From, from you two to the students. That a student at, look, look at their faces. Yeah. And they get into it. They, the bystanders run up and they call her by name. Alyssa, wake up. Alyssa, you can't be dead. You can't be dead. That's gut wrenching. Yeah. For the, the, their friends that are watching, the parents that are there, the teachers that ha have spent a lot of time with them. And to go along with that, I know the CHP, uh, you guys offer the special teen driving programs, right? Yes, um, th th there's two different programs here. Uh, part of what we do here uh, is the every 15 minute program. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, uh, the uh, FAD group and all the, the, the other agencies that are involved in the mock crash. Mm -hmm. That's part of the first day of the every 15 minute program. Um, but there's more, there's more to the every 15 minute program. You know, it's not as dramatic as the first day, but uh, the second day we have an assembly and we go through, you know, everything that was, that happened on the first day. We talk mm -hmm. about the crash. We, um, usually there's a video uh, company that puts together a video of the crash and, and everything that happened prior to. Mm -hmm. um, 
you know, stuff that the students don't see, like the, the courtroom scene where the judge brings down the sentence on the, on the teen driver that was drinking and driving. Yeah. You know, you don't, the, the students don't see that out there at the scene. They don't see the jail scene. You know, we film a jail scene where uh, uh, the, the, you know, the, the person that I arrest put them in jail and they actually get locked into a jail cell. So wow. we show those videos as well the second day at the assembly. And that's part of the every 15 minute program. Um, the, uh, the, the class that we have, that, uh, a two hour class that we do at the actual Highway Patrol office, that's the Start Smart Driving class. And that one is geared toward uh, teen drivers that are between the ages of uh, 15 and 20. Mm -hmm. So either they just got their license or they're about to get their license. And we go through, um, we go through uh, a, a lot of things from DUI to uh, uh, cause uh, uh, primary collision factors like speeding, um, driving too close to other vehicles, um, inclement weather conditions. Um, we go through cell phone laws, seat belt laws, uh, you know, all those type of things. Wow. Yeah, yeah, I mean, these programs that you, <clears throat> that you both put on are so important. And I, I think that over the years, like I said, compared to when I took driver's ed, it's, you, you have to, you know, the way kids are today and have been in the past, you know, several years, is that you have to take it to these other levels because they, right. they expect it. They see, right. you know, they're, they're desensitized by the types of things they right. see in the movies and TV and computer generated and all that. Yeah, you it's, gotta make it as real as possible. It, it's one thing to hear about, you know, a family member or a friend that got into a collision, but if you're not there at the scene, you really don't know. And, you know, you can't experience that. The, the, what these mock crashes do, it helps them experience the, the reality of, you know, the tragedy of a crash like this. And, you know, I know it's effective because, um, you know, Steve, you probably see it too, but years after we've done a mock crash, a student will come to us and say, hey, I remember that crash. I remember the every 15 minute program, you know, and they, you know, and they talk about it and they, they tell us how much of an impact it had upon them. Yeah. You know, um, for example, Chris Goodwin, who was the, the public information officer prior to me, he was involved in one of these mock crashes yeah, as, a, as a high yeah. school student. And yeah. now he's, you know, putting them on as a CHP officer. Right. So, you know, it, it, it affected him. Yeah, it definitely does. Yeah, Chris used to play the drunk driver in these for us. Mike, there was a few guys um, over the years. Uh, there's, there's a high school teacher from um, San Clemente, Rich Brown. Mike Schrader played in it, Chris Goodwin. And uh, were they students at the time or new? Um, well, new some, somewhere, but or they were just in college. Yeah, uh, a lot of them were, were. They were college students. Yeah, but so they were young. So they looked wow. like you know they, they were you know just a, a few years older than um, than you know these high school students. Yeah, but um, you know a lot of guys have become firefighters or police officers because of this. It's affected their life so much. Mm -hmm. And then um, it was great. Mission High School. Had their uh, their prom Saturday night, and I got a, a text from the activities director, and he says, "No problems, zero problems." Yeah, and, you know, that's that's what, what you and that's what exactly. you want. There, you know, the whole point of this is uh, there are always going to be some kind of accidents out there that are, you know, somewhat unavoidable, or at least the fact that the person that gets hit or something like this, these type of things, because you're focusing on driving under the influence, they are avoid avoidable. Correct. And that's the whole point to this. Correct, and since the, since the program started, the every 15 minute program started, we've noticed, uh, we have seen a decline in the statistics. So it's been very encouraging. Um, the, where the slogan every 15 minutes came from was every 15 minutes in the United States, there was either a fatality or a, a serious injury crash that was DUI related. That statistic has now increased to about 20 to 25 minutes. So we're making a difference, mm -hmm. um, and we just need to keep educating in order to continue uh, making that difference. Uh, any more plans for this year? We're at the end of the school year. No, no more. We'll okay. have. We, there's already three scheduled for next year. You do them it, in the spring or the fall or, or it's, both? It's in the spring. Okay. We, we used to try to do them in the falls, but then we have our fires, and so it was too difficult because yeah. we have. And you know, they they take months to plan. So we already have Laguna Hills. San Juan Hills and El Toro High School already planned for next year. Wow. Dates are on the book. That's amazing. Well, uh, great work you all do, and I think it's a great, and the fact that you started this, thought about something like this back when you were in high school is, is amazing. I didn't know it was, I knew it was a long yes, time ago. Yes, we've been doing them for 24 yeah. years. It's amazing. And uh, it's a great program. Obviously, it's helping out, and as I said, 
everyone inv that's involved with this is just incredible. It's a lot of time, a lot of effort. So thank you very much. It's good to have you guys uh, both on today. Again, you know, the same thing we always talk about. Check your yes. smoke detectors. Uh, people don't uh, swim alone, and uh, a lot of these things are, uh, are avoidable. And uh, so at least the outcome, if there is a problem, comes out good, and that's the, the main thing on, on that. And uh, good for on your helicopter ops that are Thanks. going up there. That's wonderful. Quickly, uh, the weather, we're going to heat up a little bit. You know that high-pressure system is expanded. should hit about...